uh, a chance for them is uh, to fulfill their dream, um, something they've worked extremely hard for. Uh, it's not a large signing class here, but uh, you know the, this class uh, we're very confident are going to um, fit well into our program. And as we continue with with the younger players here that that are on this list to to, to fit into our culture and and, and help us in years to come, and uh, so. Uh, again, there'll be more in the second signing and, and, and things as we work through. But uh, uh, once again, uh, you know, for us to, you know, the timing, we've talked about that every week in here when we arrived and, and, and for, a, for the 22 class, it, you know, that, that provided some challenges. And, uh, but uh, all in all, we're very pleased for where that's at. So I'll just open up for questions. We have microphones on both sides here. Lance, you signed uh, Ethan as, as one of your guys mm -hmm. here in this class. Could you talk through the process of deciding to, to pick up Ethan and sign quarterback uh, in this class? Uh, discuss that? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we, we have these talks all the time. I think when you look at it and uh, obviously the importance of the position and, and really, uh, um, you know, today's uh, atmosphere of, of a climate of of college football and what happens, you know, the depth that you need. You, you saw what happened to us in, in the uh, Kansas State game and, and, and injuries and that. But um, um, also, uh, you know, uh, Miles Kendrick will not be back. Conrad Holly will not be back. And, and when we knew those things were transpiring, we, we knew around that time that, uh, um, you know, a quarterback was going to be needed in this class. So that, that's probably changed late, you know, the later part of the season. And, and just what do you like about Ethan specifically? Uh, well, you know, we had we, we'd evaluated him while we were at Buffalo. Uh, Coach Dabrowski's always liked him, stayed in contact with him. Uh, tall, rangy, can run the ball as well, but he's got a strong arm. Uh, very mature young man, that uh, leader. Um, and uh, just the whole package that we thought that was going to fit into our system. and. Uh, you know, he was one that was going to, if we were going that route, that was, uh, um, you know, what Jim, where Jim wanted to go from the start. And so, I guess, you go to the high school route instead of the transfer route, at least at, at this point. I guess, mm -hmm. why that instead of me bringing a more veteran guy, especially with Miles? I think um, you know the answer to that. Okay. <laughs> and we're, you know, I, I, you know, not to be rude, I mean, you know, we're, we're pleased with the quarterbacks, the older quarterbacks that are here and the play of Jalen Daniels late in the season very inspiring but and again we saw flashes of, of what Jason Bean can do as well so um, right now at this point um, that, that that's what we uh, want to go and and we know we have a lot of work to do yet um, holistically as a program and, and offensively and uh, you know uh, but again um, we are highly encouraged and inspired by our play late in the year and what, what we can do with those guys and, and that's where we want to be. You know, so I know you can all talk about the signings that are on the, the paper here, but mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a couple offensive line that you signed. I guess there's more potentially coming uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. I just yeah. How you feel about the guys you brought on and just that focus on that position? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, James Livingston's young man that came came on campus unofficially this summer, and you know we we're highly impressed with him. First team All State player. Um, you know. Uh, you know, gave us that side. Then we had a chance to go watch him play. He committed during the summer, and uh, but Andy Kolnick even went up, watched him, and, and just you know, we we're very impressed again with his for a man that size, how he moved his feet, his physicality. Um, you know, uh, and, and you know, came back here in December. Um, just a highly impressive young man. Again, that's going to fit what what we want to do in our inside outside zone scheme. So, um, you know, excited about him, Joey Baker. Um, you know, uh, comes from an excellent football program. Again, he was here during the summer on, on an official visit, committed during that time. Um, came back again. Um, comes from an athletic and a football family, which I, you know, I think is going to be very important as well. Sometimes, where you know, he, he, you know, he gets it. His, his father coached many years in the uh, in college football, but also coached in the NFL. Um, Last coaching with the Cowboys, his grandfather Joe Baker was a athletic director uh, for many years in college athletics at the small college level. In fact, he was the uh, 
athletic director at Wisconsin Lacrosse while I was at Whitewater. Um, so, um, great family. Um, really excited about him as well and his maturity, and because I know he's been around uh, the game the way he has. And again, from from the team, uh, his high school program, you know, finished 14 and one. Um, you know the the grind and the length of a college season and all those things. I think when you put in some of those intangibles, I know he's going to be a great addition. Hey, how how different is this recruiting cycle just from what you're used to? Just I mean, especially with like the very transfer portal options and that kind of changing the numbers. And, very different. Yeah. Very different. Um, there's so much going on, and I I guess uh, again. Uh, I've also been doing exit meet or end of the year meetings with our players here the last three days, so I apologize. There's sometimes a little lot of different thoughts going through my head, and um, I really need to, to, to thank our recruiting staff and departments. You know, uh, all those people kind of in the other wing there because um, you're referring to the portal and other things, and uh, to say things are very fluid and moving in a lot of different directions, and they still are. And, and for us to um, and they were on top of it all the time. And uh, it's different in so many ways, um, different than in, uh, you know, with, you know, there's coaching changes uh, all over the country that does it. Uh, that, that always has it, but now you throw in the portal component. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's the new world we live in and it's been highly different. And I think you'll see that across the country today with, with uh, a lot of different ways of signing classes uh, numbers are. How, how will the math kind of work for this class? Like by the time it's done, you know, in a couple of months, how, how many will you be bringing on total? That's good. That's, um, that'll be a little fluid. But <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I guess the one thing I, I wanted to also kind of answer that a little bit is when you say this class, I think part of this class is some guys you saw this fall because of some of the numbers we had to use based on some of the attrition. So I think Mike Davidsky is a pretty good member of this class. I think Rich Miller is a big addition to this class. Trevor Wilson, Michael Ford. So I think this recruiting class already has paid some dividends for this program. And I could go on with Jason Bean and you know Eddie Wilson and, and Ron McGee added some, some depth to this team. So, those guys, when you say those numbers shaking out, I'm giving you some of those numbers already, yeah. so you could see. And then there's parts of, of new rules of that you can gain a few back, so that's why I say it's still fluid. And then we have to decide, you know, how we're going to use some of those holistically, and if there's any other legislation that'll change along the way. That, as we know, we've still um, have, have battled. Uh, um, you know, our numbers to, to that 85, or what we want that 85 almost to be. Do you, do you have a sense of how many high school guys you might end up with? Not Park? completely yet, no, okay, I, I don't. There could be a few more in there, but yeah. And you mentioned the 85, how, how close can you guys get to 85 next year? What's it I think we projecting can, like? We will be, I, I think we have a chance to be there, yes. And, and I guess holistically, and I say that, and you know, we could, we could, we could put a lot of people to sleep on this <laughs> subject, but but those of you that kind of really are kind of into that a little bit, and, and days, and we start using these words that sometimes I, I make them explain it to me a couple times, but it also would depend on how much you know if we're in the business of of spending some of the, the 23 class, yeah. and and we want to be very very cautious with that as well, but at the same time addressing what we need to because uh, you know that's that's a that, that's a class especially locally that we've been able to to build relationships and 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 really start analyzing and looking forward to continuing that and we want to make sure as we do that that we can we can do those things so um, you know there's I, I don't know what I'm sure somebody uh, John will break down um, what percentage would, will be high school signees, how many will be junior college and that across the country and, and where, where the makeup is and how that compares. Um, the other part that's going to be really interesting is, you know, when they break those numbers down, it used to be like 93% were signing on this day. Well, 
I don't know if that's really going to be the case based on how people use any and any of their transfers in, in their scholarship announce or uh, you know all those things so it be interesting I I think for us though um, it's important as we go through and it's not offense to the people that that do that for a living or, or any of those things we respect those is that our main focus has to be that we make our football team better better for the short term better for the long term and what do I mean by that is is we have to create more situations of internal competition each and every day to get everybody to their to their highest potential and, and, and reach that. So when we look at that and we're looking at where we're unbalanced and we, we inherited a, a situation where we're highly imbalanced in offense and defensive scholarships. We have some positions that are highly over scholarships based on a breakdown, not, not people's abilities. It's just where, where you want them at. And that causes death problems. So we want to get ourselves in the best position moving forward, and and we believe that uh, we are well on our way to do that. Following up on that, we're, because of the timing and, and because of what you just talked about there, were, were you able to, to worry about need as much, or did you have to worry about the numbers just as much, or how did you, I guess, big picture approach your, your attack in this class. When you say timing, our arrival. Correct. Won't yeah. be glad when we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> It'll be like three years, much, right? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, some of each, you know, we, but, but again, the, the other component for us, um, just to be as transparent as I can is, you know, so many people, are, it, this is moving so fast these days with high school players and offers and that. Well, it's hard to offer. It was hard to do a lot in the 22 class when you haven't coached the, your current team and how it was going to fit us. So that was challenging along the way. And then as you evolve through this season, certain guys start elevating their game and they're progressing like, yeah, well, here we see that or this guy's coming or this one or this area is now is, is not as quite as deep as we had hoped and we need. And so those were, you know, so it's always kind of moving and it, and it probably will be that way for a while. And I think the things that, um, uh, again, to kind of answer some of these, uh, just holistically on recruiting is, you know, Daniel Burke gave me a, one of our um, game notes one week. And it talked about the amount of starts that another, another school had had. And I asked them to do ours. And we're like, it was almost half, maybe 60%. And what, and what today's transfer portal and other things are doing is people can recruit for depth and, re, and, and get more experience within that, that, that too deep that gets handed to you every week and stay as an older veteran football team. And as you know, we're the youngest power five football team in the country. So solely just adding more high school players, I don't know what's gonna be in, the, in, in this changing landscape. This is a different way of college football than when I stood in front of you on on May 3rd and talked about recruiting. It is vastly changed and uh, we have to be able to adapt in many different ways with it. Were, were, were you here long enough? Was that enough of a season to, to truly identify need and, and did you do it? Did you did you address it? Are you success, satisfied with it? In um, Guess I'll give ourselves a little bit more. We, you know, we'd like to see a little more in the spring mm -hmm. because part of that has to do with understanding and implementing of what we're going to do and how how the current players are doing that and where we need more help. Right. Right. Um, some of that has to do with health. Sometimes there are some players that uh, you know didn't partake this year really in anything. Um, but yeah, it gave us a good a, a good starting point. Um, and we knew through some schematic changes that we we're going to be light in some areas, and, and we've got to find ways to catch that back up. I, I think it's it was uh, um, a good start, mm -hmm. but I think we'll feel better um, after spring as we really head into the summer part of the recruiting of the 23 class. So that that part's exciting.